Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Agave Talk, your number one source for everything agave. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today, we are checking out the second round of Binateros Bacanora. Yes. If you do follow the channel, you know last week we reviewed the Blanco. Let me get that bad boy in there. Yes. And you know, too, that this was phenomenal. I love this. Loved it. Loved it. Love it. Brand new brand to me. Um, I got the Blanco and the Reserva. The Reserva is age. I'm going to break that down today, really go into depth. Um, the Blanco itself is then what's being aged. So what's in this bottle is then aged and it turns into this Reserva. And to be completely honest, go watch this video. Go watch this video. I'm going to put that link right up there. Um, or is it on that side? One of these, all right? It's going to be there. Go check that out because this right here is absolutely delicious. I love this. And um, it's something you're not seeing often. So if you are a fan of tequila, you are a fan of mezcal, cool, great. You can find those anywhere, right? However, there's also a whole other categories such as Bacanora. Yes, Raicia, Setol. We've done reviews on those as well. So scroll through the feed. You could check that out too. But today we are reviewing this Bacanora, the Reserva, which has been aged. And honestly, just such a, such a cool spirit. Highly recommend you go check that video out, right? So let's say goodbye to the Blanco. Get him back over there and bring this guy up to the front. Binateros Bacanora. Oh man, this is a spirit distilled from agave. Agave silvestre is the actual um, the actual species of agave that they're using. And this is from Sonora, Mexico. All right. So again, being from this region, using that specific uh, species of agave is why it is Bacanora. It's not mezcal. It's not tequila, right? It's not raicilla. It's not a cousin Sotol. It is Bacanora. Super cool stuff, and that is why you come to our channel to see stuff like this. You're not seeing stuff like this anywhere else. Uh, first and foremost is, really, you're not seeing this in many places. Bacanora is something that you don't see often. It's not very common at all. Tequila, sure. Mezcal, sure. But Bacanoras, you're not seeing really anywhere. But if you do, please go try it. If you are a fan of agave, you're just here for the first time, whoever you are, go explore. The world is filled with amazing, amazing flavors and tastes. And something like this is really a treat. So I really highly recommend you go if you ever get a chance to try, try anything such as Bacanora, Raicilla, Satol. Um, absolutely check them out, check them out, check them out for sure. All right. So I have not opened this up, even though it, it looks like it is cracked slightly. Um, I have not opened this. This was shifted in shipping, but you can tell this is completely full uh, and super, super, super excited for this. I did go into depth in the Blanco video um, about the brand itself. I will share even just about Bacanora a little bit. Uh, if you have not done, please go check out that video because some of that information is there. And if you're not going to check it out, that's okay too. I'm going to give you the information here regardless. All right. So the story of Bacanora itself, once known to be illegal, yes, Bacanora was illegal. It's a sensational spirit with a story rooted deep in Mexican history. Although able to be enjoyed throughout the country today due to religion and politics from the years 1915 to 1992, Bacanora was under federal prohibition. Yes, anyone caught drinking or selling this spirit risked imprisonment or even possible death. So just having this right now, I'm, I'm very happy it's, you know, past 1992. You can find Bacanora. It is legal now, but it was illegal from 1915 to 1992. So really interesting. Um, and regardless of those risks, uh, you know, those prohibition did not stop Bacanora's production. No, rather than give up family traditions and livelihood, producers developed disguised methods in order to bootleg their Bacanora and so they called themselves Binateros or Spanish for winemaker. So the V in Spanish is pronounced like a B. So it's not Vinateros. I mean, if you say Vinateros, it's fine. Uh, but it's Binateros. And it it's like has to do with wine, winemakers, right? 
uh, production of wine, stuff like that, Binatero. So super cool. This really is, you know, like like an agave wine. There, it used to be back in the day. Hey, that's that's it. And I mean, even still putting it in the, uh, you know, those old wine style bottles. Super cool. I'm digging it. Digging a really digging the branding on this brand. So Binateros Bacanora was named in respect to both the spirit's history and the people who have been distilling it for more than 300 years. Made in the traditional manner, Binateros Bacanora is twice distilled, naturally fermented, and made solely from water and agave silvestre. So again, kind of we go through it in many videos, but agave is like kind of like if you think of dogs, right? You got agave is the dog. But then you have different breeds of dogs, right? You got a uh, Rottweiler, Schnauzer, Shih Tzu, Sharpe, um, Cocker Spaniel, right? Those are the different species, but they are all one dog. So you have agave, but then you have the different species of agave. And the species that this is made out of is agave silvestre, all right? And because... Also, the brand itself, they value ethical production. You can find that the product is still being hand bottled today and a state crafted on a small ranch outside of the town on Cochi, Sonora, Mexico. So super cool, super cool. Really going to be checking this out. And even too on the back, um, it actually has that entire story. So if you do see this anywhere out there, pick it up, read that back. What I just read to you, it is on the back. So what makes this different than from the Blanco? Let me get the Blanco in here. The Blanco itself, again, what's in this bottle, this aged bottle that looks really dark, is this Blanco. They're then just aging it, all right? So the Agave Silvestre, they're harvesting by hand. They're roasting it in an in-ground oven for three days with a unique blend of wood. Uh, not sure what that blend is, but it definitely has a nice, nice, uh, flavor and smell of wood on there. They naturally ferment for eight to 14 days with spring water, uh, distilled through double distillation, like I shared. Uh, it is a 40%, yeah, right there, 40%. Both of those are 40%. And it's coming from master distiller Jesus Maldonado. So cheers, hats off. So what's the difference then with this? With this, they're resting in charred white oak barrels for two to four months. So what's in this bottle, they then take and basically age in charred white oak barrels for two to four months. All depends on the weather situation. The master distiller comes over. Is it ready? Is it not? Uh, but anywhere from two to four months is then how long this has been aged. So again, they just take this, age it for two to four months, and this is then where you get the reserva. So I'm about to open this up. I'm really, really excited. Let your bottles pop. Ah, there we go. Oof. Look in here, look in here. Let me get this. It's a yeah, standard rustic looking cork. You can see with the wood kind of cracked, kind of cool. The whole brand, Binateros Bacanora. Again, Bacanoras to me just kind of seem like really rustic. And uh, it's not something that you're finding every day. But it is something, again, just agave spirits in general are getting so, so much more popular. You are going to find certain uh, brands producing things like Bacanora, Raicillas, and Satols as well. Uh, just because, again, it's the popularity, uh, something new, something exclusive, something rare, something unique. That's where Bacanora comes into. So again, if you are a fan of agave, agave, 100% blue Weber, right? That's that's what you're drinking, blue agave when you're drinking tequila. Mezcal, there's a ton of different agave species that uh, they use to produce it, right? Bacanora, this Bacanora right here is using agave silvestre. So when you actually are drinking this, you are getting flavors of the agave silvestre, and that is what you're tasting. It's going to be a completely different taste than what you're used to with tequila, but it might be a little bit more familiar um, if you are a fan of drinking mezcal just because of the production methods. You heard that they are, you know, roasting this underground for three days, that unique blend of wood, um, you know, so really, really interesting. But again, just so unique, too, because of the agave that they're using and the area that it comes from, that Sonoran area. All right. So looking at the legs and tears, this is not sticking around at all. Uh, not sticky one bit. It's not even getting, you know, caught on camera. It's just, it's gone. It, it doesn't stick at all. Very dark in color, though. 
very dark in color, only two to four months rusted, but really dark in color. I'm wondering how, um, how charred are those barrels? What is that char level on there? Because that is, I mean, a really, it looks really dark in, in the bottles just because of, you know, the gold labeling and stuff on that. But like from the side, and you can see on this white background really makes it pop. That is a very dark, dark uh, spirit right there. Well, let's take a smell. Cheers, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Well, man, if you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. Had to get the plug. Salud. Oh, 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 oh yes. This is, oh, man, I've, I've been excited, too. Because like I said, I, I, I just reviewed the Blanco. Um, we released that last week. I released that last week, right? And um, I wanted to give this its own spotlight, its own time. But since I drank that Blanco, I was like, oh my God, I just really can't wait to try uh, their aged expression. Because, you know, the Blanco was just so delicious, so solid. And as I'm smelling it right now, Oh, that agave silvestre is really shining through, even being aged for two to four months. And now, not only is it being cooked with wood, right? It has that, that kind of smoky smell to it, like a really nice mezcal. It also has notes of that oak, that white oak that is being aged in. Um, oh my gosh, so earthy, so rural, rustic. It just smells like 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 earth, like dirt. And if, if you are a fan of the channel, you do subscribe. Thank you. You know that's how I love um, my mezcalas. Very, very rustic, very rural, earthy, funky, right? Uh, and this, oh, this is no different. Oh, even like, like kind of caramel in there. Oh, man. Yeah, that's delicious. Very... Very, it's, ah, oh, the, the Silvestre itself is really shining through, which is nice. You're really getting a lot of agave on there, uh, but you are getting that oak. You're getting that fire. You're getting that smoke, super balanced, but it's even like fruity. It's got such a fruit, like a, like a, like a fruity, earthy caramel, plum, mango even, but like a charred mango. Imagine taking a mango, a really ripe mango. And just charring it with a blowtorch. And even like, oh my gosh, that's, this is complex. I, I, I'll be honest, I could sit, I, I kind of want to pull up, <laughs> pull up my wheel right now. Like there's, there's tasting and smelling wheels out there. And as you're smelling it, if you look around the wheel, um, you can really start pulling out. Because again, memory, smell and memory is incredible. And if you look at something, if I told you like plum, right? But then I said like a charred plum, like a burnt plum. You can kind of figure out what that smells like just based off memory. You know what a plum smells like. You know what kind of something burning smells like. If that caramelization is going on with like the plum or the mango, that's, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Oh, I'm loving this. No, this is killer. This is killer. Oh, so much going on in there. That is amazing. Um, I, I can do this all day. Let me take a sip. Cheers. Salute. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. You are, it's again, you're getting a lot of agave on there. You are getting some of the wook, but the wook, wood, I'm reading oak as I'm trying to say wood. You're getting some of that oak. You're getting some of the wood, right? Not wook, oak and wood. Um, and it's, it's complimentary. It's not overbearing the smoke as well. Uh, because again, you are getting some of the smoke from the production method, but that wood, that charred wood is going to impact a little bit as well. But overall, let me take another sip. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah. Again, it kind of has like a, it's earthy, dirty, dirt, like earth soil, wet soil, clay, minerals, delicious, but you're getting some fruitiness to it as well. Like I said, I'm, I'm sticking with like a real dark plum, um, a real ripe mango, but charred, charred and burnt. Um, oh man, 
That's delicious. That is delicious. Let me finish this out. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, that's excellent. Dry. It's dry in the mouth. You saw like it didn't stick anywhere um, on that cup whatsoever. The flavor, though, is just long lasting. Um, if you're a cognac drinker, whiskey drinker, uh, bourbon drinker, this might be a good transition. It's a little bit more leaning on the side of a cognac. Uh, man, but that agave flavor still on this is just so, so pronounced um, for being aged for the two to four months. And it's it's delicious. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Like I said, I was really digging the Blanco. Get that back in there. Um, really digging this. And just to see the progression of aging this in those white oak barrels for two to four months really, really, really changes the character. Um, the the taste, like it's just, oh man, it just adds such a different layer, uh, uh, such a different depth uh, to that right there. What I will actually do is I'm going to pour out uh, some of this Blanco and do it head to head. Oh yeah. Do it head to head with this right here. Uh, the Reserva. And I got some water on the side as well that I am going to wash my mouth, swirl it around a little bit. Let's try this Blanco. Let's try the Reserva head to head and really, you know, kind of compare the two. But so far this Reserva, oh, cheers. This Reserva, man, that is, that is delicious, delicious, delicious. Let me see. Get those in shot. Hopefully, I don't spill nothing. Head to head. Boom. Let me get my water. <laughs> and I appreciate you all being here on this process. You know, I usually a uh, one shot, one take. I love to do it. That's the water. All right. Again, this Blanco, super clear. Oh, yeah. Just so like raw and straight. So this, you're really getting a lot of, a lot of earthy tones, a lot of minerals in there as well. This just, it smells like they're plucked the plant out of the ground and just shoved it in the bottle. Whereas the Reserva, oh, it's just so, another layer, it, it, it definitely mellowed out. They're both 40%, but this definitely has more of a, a like punch in your face kind of smell a lot of black pepper as well on here but the reserve is more like it, it just kind of really toned it down so in you know the tequila world two to four months that's a reposado right and um this though it's just so dark so dark you would think it might even be an añejo but yeah just for two to four months that would be on the reposado line uh, but you just a reason i bring that up is just because of the restedness right it just seems so much more like rested and just kind of mellowed out compared to this Blanco. This Blanco is really rural, really rustic. I love it. Cheers. All right. Let me take a sip of this. Mm. Ah, so cool. Such a cool spirit. Please, please, please go check out Bacanora. And if you do get the Binateros brand, if you do see this anywhere, highly recommend it. You're not going to be disappointed at all. Very rustic. Let me just jump back into the Reserva because, again, I drank this to really get a little bit more of this um, flavor. Ah, just washing my mouth out with some water. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. Just such a different layer. Such a different layer. Super interesting. What I am thinking, though, like, again, when we, we especially when we're talking tequila, um, you know, additives get brought up and things like that, especially in aged expressions. This, I'm not tasting anything. I'm not tasting anything that seems like chemical or manipulated, but I would be curious. There's a, there's like a, like a percent of me in here where, again, kind of those those um, fruity notes that I was getting, like the plum and the and the mango, right? Because definitely, especially going from the Blanco to the Reserva, and I was thinking that I was drinking it, going from here to there, uh, it's not it's not an overpowering sweetness at all. Please don't get me wrong. Wood can caramelize and give you some of those notes, right? So don't get me wrong. Again, this is not sweet. This is not taste sweet at all. 
It doesn't taste manipulated. It doesn't taste like anything like chemicals or anything like that. But I would be curious for some reason, some way, somehow, maybe a couple drops of like mango essence, plum essence. I don't know. And if it's not in there, please, I would really, Binateros, let the people know, like, how did we get that flavor? Because that's kind of cool. I'm really digging it. Um, and it's just, again, just such a layer. That's ridiculous. Overall, I love it. Binateros, Bacanora. Uh, very happy you guys. You know, it's past 1992 and we are legal now. Okay. All right. <laughs> because yes, I highly recommend this. This is delicious. And uh, when these bottles go, I got to get some more bottles, man. These are great. Uh, overall, hey, that's it. I appreciate you being here. If you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. If you have had this, drop it down below. If you've had a Bacanora, drop it down below in the comments. Let me know. And if you never had, please go check this out. I'm digging it. All right. Thank you for being here and take care.